So you're interested in natural ways that you can lower your blood pressure in the privacy of your own home. Well, today I'm here to give you some tips on how you can do that naturally. If you're interested, please stay tuned. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Jamesia Capri, the nurse practitioner extraordinaire. And if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you're already subscribed, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. All right, so today I really am excited about this topic because I get a lot of patients who come to me asking how they can lower their own blood pressure naturally. I also get a lot of my friends asking me those same things. And I just want you to think about the fact that 46% of the population have been diagnosed with hypertension or high blood pressure, which is the same thing. So that means almost half all Americans have hypertension. So you may be included in that number. I'm going to give you natural ways to decrease your own blood pressure, taking into account that there's so many things out there that are telling you you can use cinnamon, you can use cherry juice, you can use apple cider vinegar. There's so many different things that you can do. I'm gonna give you some surefire ways that you can really take control of your blood pressure. No, it will not be easy, but I know that you can do it. I want you to please stick around until the end of this video where I give you the magic bullet that I've learned to give to my patients to lower their blood pressure. The, number the first thing I wanna discuss with you being that I'm a woman, I wanted to just highlight the fact that the number one cause of death in women is not breast cancer. It is cardiovascular disease. So if you're diagnosed with high hypertension, high blood pressure, it can lead to cardiovascular disease, which can then lead to strokes and could possibly lead to um, heart attacks. And you don't want that. So really the main thing is an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. And I know you guys hear that. So that's kind of what I want to focus on today in this video. Things that you really can do to help you with your hypertension or your blood pressure. First, I want to talk to you about your diet. I know it's hard because 70% of our diet or what we eat contributes to our blood pressure and can, can control our blood pressure. The other 30% can be controlled by medications. But what you wanna do is you wanna take control of that 70%. So your diet, if you can get a hold of the DASH diet, a well-balanced diet, you really can help control your blood pressure. Those uh, diets that are low in salt, which is my next thing that I wanna tell you, you want to decrease your salt. And people ask me, well, how much salt is that? And how do I do that with all of this processed food? Well, normally you really want your salt to be anywhere from 1500 milligrams to 2300 milligrams a day. If you have bad hypertension or you're not able to control your hypertension, try to go as low as 1500 milligrams. Stay away from processed foods, guys. They're the worst they really get you caught up. You don't even realize how much salt is in everything, added salt. So if you can stay away from processed foods, that's really, you're right on the right track by doing that. But yes, so keep it right at 1500 milligrams. If you're not that bad, then you can go up to 2300 milligrams of salt. All salts are the same. Don't get caught up in, is it kosher salt? Is it Himalayan salt? Is it pink salt, table salt? They're all the same. They all affect your body the same. So just decrease your salt. The next thing I wanna tell you about is exercise. I know that people push exercise, push exercise, but I'm telling you, if you have hypertension, you really want to heed that warning. You want to at least get 150 minutes of exercise in a week, which is really two and a half hours in a week. So you can spread that out over seven days and get your exercise. If you already have hypertension, you've been trying to exercise, you're walking every day in the neighborhood, you need to increase that to get some moderate intensity exercise. And what I mean by that is 
if you're walking the neighborhood, that's great. Then maybe you can add like a little slow jog to that from where you start to the stop sign, even if it's short, even if it's jogging for 15 seconds out of every three minutes, that will increase your intensity. That's, that's not that hard if you will try that. Or you can try to add weights. Start walking with ankle weights, start walking with weights in your hand. You can include weights to increase your intensity. That's another thing. If you're feeling like you can go up the ante a little bit more, you can add some uh, resistance, some intensity, lifting weights, resistance bands, something that will increase your muscle mass. That will do it also. The next thing I want to talk to you about is um, getting into the habit of not drinking that much alcohol, especially if you're a woman. You need to decrease your alcohol intake to at least one glass a day. Not a big glass, just moderate six ounces, four to six ounces for a female. For a man, you can have two to three, um, up to two to three glasses in one day. So yours is a little bit different. I don't know why it is that way with men, but it just is, okay? And you want to stop smoking. If you can stop smoking, you need to stop smoking. Ask your provider for something to help you with to stop smoking, and that will help you as well. Now, what they have um, done here recently in the American Heart Association, JNC8 guidelines, all of the journals and guidelines have decreased your blood pressure requirement or the, the limit um, from 140 over 90 to now 130 over 80. So you, you have a little bit stricter guideline now. And the reason for that is that we're finding that a lot of people are being affected even at those lower numbers, especially if they have some other type of comorbidity, which is diabetes or high cholesterol, overweight, obesity, stuff like that, add it to it. So you really want to be sure that you are controlling your blood pressure. The next thing that you can do, um, you can increase your potassium. If you don't have enough potassium in your diet, that does affect your blood pressure. So now pay attention, if you have kidney disease, then this does not apply to you because having kidney disease that kind of throws it into a whole nother range that I'm not gonna talk about in this video. But if you're normal, you don't have any kidney disease, nothing's wrong with your kidneys, you need to make sure that you have the appropriate amount of potassium. So you can find potassium in foods like bananas, sweet potatoes, um, avocados, things like that, that have an increase in potassium. So you wanna make sure that you are getting that potassium. Uh, in your diet. And that's another reason why your doctor, when you get that um, hydrochlorothiazide or diuretic or Lasix, that they will add potassium because when you take all that water off and you have all that off your system, potassium leaves your body also. And then you're headed into another heart condition that I won't talk about in this video, but you just wanna make sure that you are getting enough potassium enriched foods, okay? Now, I should be down to my very last one and I thank you so much for sticking around. I did wanna to talk to, uh, quickly just say this to my uh, women who are entering into menopause. When you enter into menopause, you are at a 95% greater risk of developing heart disease. So you wanna do everything you can to stay, <laughs> to stay away from having cardiovascular disease because we're dying from cardiovascular disease. We're like the leading culprits of dying from cardiovascular disease. And it does increase once you reach uh, menopause and that has to do with your estrogen levels and your hormones so you want to make sure that you do everything that you can so the magic bullet here guys is really weight loss and i know that's hard for a lot of you but you can do it if you decrease your weight get your weight down to your ideal weight you really can come off of a lot of those medications that you're on if you decrease your weight yes it's hard and nothing happens overnight there's no magic. You have to put in the work. So the rule of thumb is that if you lose at least 
one pound or one, excuse me, one kilogram, that equals one millimeter of your blood of mercury of your blood pressure dropping so if you drop when you drop your weight you also drop your you also control your hypertension your your hypertension your diabetes diabetes uh cholesterol all of those things begin to change and they decrease so that is the magic bullet here and i know some of you are thinking you know i've tried everything i've done everything but you need to if you want to control your blood pressure Losing weight really is the magic bullet. Okay guys, thank you for sticking in there with me until the end of this video. If you like this video and you want more videos like this, please leave me some comments so that I know that you're enjoying the content and I know that you are watching and want more of this particular content. I thank you so much. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys and have a great day. Take care. Woo!